everybody, Dear Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Color X Malice along K. Okazaki's route. We had a lovely morning with Okazaki, followed by, uh, the rude interruption of news that, uh, an next event occurred, then somehow we were not notified while we were having our wonderful morning. But now we're at the police station, so let's see what Shirashi here has to tell us. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. My phone vibrated. I checked it and saw a text from Shiraishi. Oh, are you free now? Can you meet me on the roof? I guess I'm going right there. Yanagi and his friends are feeling lonely. Don't you want their help? Shiraishi grinned as he confronted me with his inquiry. The day after I talked to Ogazaki in the park, I told Yanagi that I intended to investigate on my own. I did it because I thought that making frequent contact with Yanagi's team would cause trouble for Okazaki. I only said I wouldn't be working alongside them. I have my reasons. Hmm, reasons? Well, whatever. Shirashi had an odd, suggestive look on his face. So, how are you going to continue going about your investigation? Very carefully. I think I'll start with the November incident. Officers died in that one, and I think it'll be easier to investigate it from within the station. I see. Well, that could be the right call. Then I'll give you my expert take on it for free this time. Uh, please do. In November, a truck and police motorcycle had collided head-on, killing both involved. It was thought to be an accident at first, but strange traffic signal activity was spotted on the video recordings. All the lights had turned green at the same time, causing traffic to enter the intersection from all directions. The collision had occurred at full speed. The truck driver had a criminal record. The slain officer didn't have any outstanding issues, but maybe digging will reveal something. It's possible that he did something in the past. The police have looked into this too, but it doesn't seem like they've found anything yet. For now, that is. Shirashi and I had the same opinion. The XD incidents had undoubtedly stemmed from the sloppy police investigation methods and structure. The goal of the XD crimes was revenge. However, it likely wouldn't stop there. Adonis was trying to change Japan itself so that citizens would carry out their idea of justice. No one knew what would happen on X Day in January, but the brazen nature of the crime so far suggested that it would be on a massive scale. I shuddered to imagine how many victims there would be. Thirteen days left, huh? <sighs> there were thirteen days remaining. Shinjuku's future rested on us settling this. I don't like how they skip so many days in some of these routes. And now we're into chapter four. On Okazaki's side. December 20th, and he's actually in the office at 10 p.m., so, what did you want to discuss? I'm kicking you the hell out if it's stupid. <laughs> well, Okazaki always barges in here on his own, but he asked to see all of us this time. It's probably something important. Smart boy for once. You even called me, eh? Your face says it's important. Why does Shirashi look so tall standing in the middle there? I came here to ask you all a favor. I think you know this but my mission is to observe and report your movements. What? <laughs> Apparently one person didn't know this. Yeah, thought so. Right. We'd all figured it was that. Except for Anamoto. We all quit the force for strong reasons, and we each had some familiarity with investigation and central leadership. It's natural for the police to be wary of a group that could have a connection to the criminals or a likelihood of contacting them. Well, let's get the pleasantries. Why are you deliberately coming to us after all this time? Part of my mission was to report the details of anyone related to you. You mean Hoshino? Did you hear about the caller from her? Yeah. And are you going to tell your superiors? You know the danger that poses to her. I won't tell anyone about our situation. If that were the case, I wouldn't be here now. Everything's common sense so far. I decided that I'm going to protect her. No matter what. Oh, protection, eh? So, I want your help. Wait, wait. Did you skip a bunch of steps? Why exactly are you protecting her? 
Just shut up and quit complicating things. She's already working with us. We won't pose any sort of threat to her. Huh. So, you want to take the collar off, right? Yeah. You're quick shit, are she? Please. Everyone but Manega the idiot knows that. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. Hey, don't agree with his insults. At least apologize or something for that. <laughs> don't agree with his insults. We'd like to do something about that collar of hers, too. But we'd endanger her if we went at it poorly. We have no choice but to investigate X Day as they demand. Is that what you want? <sighs> it's not. You know there are other avenues. You probably haven't pursued them because you don't want to put her at risk. But you've already figured out that she's 100% innocent, haven't you? Don't presume to know what I think. No, no. Let's just hear Okazaki out first. Anyway, I can sense some anxiety from you over your general lack of progress. X day is planned for January. It's nearly here. I think we should act, even if there are risks. We know that, man. What are you trying to tell us? The perp that committed this month's crimes were arrested after evidence of them was found. Or they're currently marked as suspects. And everyone they've arrested and questioned has claimed they've had memory loss during interviews. Rika Sugawara is a good example. So, what's that mean? Yanagi. We won't catch up to Adonis by chasing down the perpetrators one by one. They're just being used like disposable pawns. Is that what you wanted to say? Yeah. Right now, Ichika is the only lead that will get us closer to Adonis. So, you want us to use the stupid cat more? Huh? As a decoy? In a word, yes. If we keep investigating the crimes like we have been, we'll never learn anything about Adonis, and January will be upon us. Adonis will string us on until we expose them. I think we need other angles besides detective work. Okazaki, didn't you say you want to protect her? He is not a liar. He's sincere on both fronts. Yeah, I want to protect her. That's why I want the collar off immediately. There are risks involved, but doing nothing will put her in even greater danger. Our situation won't change until we find a way to unlock the collar and trace it to the culprits. If we do nothing, then X Day will definitely come, so we need to confront the danger, huh? You're not going to tell the dumb cat. If the enemy hears it, then what's the point? And you're fine with this. I made her a promise. She won't run away and she won't give up. So I'm going to protect her no matter what. Everyone says nothing. What exactly is the plan? Any concrete plans then? This will be one big fiasco if it fails. I figured I'd ask you to think of one. <laughs> You didn't even try. <laughs> Pretty bold of you to come here without any plan. Hey, that's not what I'm good at. I said I needed your help, remember? Huh, <laughs> easy for you to say. You decided to work with her because you thought you could make use of her collar. At the same time, you doubted her innocence. Well, that is true. Since she's done nothing suspicious, shouldn't you prioritize her safety over the possible guilt now? If you really suspected her, you could have just sat back and waited for her to slip up and make a mistake. <laughs> All of you are straight shooters. You knew that acting too openly would put her in danger, so you avoided doing that. It may seem like they've been too carefree, but they were conflicted over how to deal with her. I never thought the day would come where you'd be the one giving the orders. He's making a request, not giving orders. She's determined to be a great police officer. I want to put my faith in those feelings. And I want all of you to share the same determination she has. How would you consider the possibility that we could be on the wrong side? I have, but I don't have any evidence to doubt you, so I'll trust you. Well, there's one person here that you shouldn't be trusting. Uh, are you sure about this? Your reasoning seems a little convenient. Well, if you turn out to be terrorist, I'll just take all of you out. That easy, huh? Wow. Well, there it is. This was so important you needed to call me here so I could hear this too. You are the only one in this group who can operate within the police. So yes, 
I needed you to hear it too. I want to stay by our side at all times, so I'm going to be tied down. We can use her collar to start closing in on Adonis and make some progress towards solving the X-Day crimes. I don't really have a reason to refuse. I feel a little bad for doing it behind her back, but I guess this really isn't the time to nitpick that. I think that you're all investigating these crimes for personal reasons. But I want your help on this. Stopping X-Day is the most certain way to protect her. Hey, can't you go along with me on this one thing? <sighs> if our leader decides we should go along with it, sure. Well, I think Yanagi's already given his answer. <sighs> hmm? Oh, that's mine. I think it's a text. From me? Sorry, I'm late. I just got off work. Sorry, I need to go. Ichika just finished work. Huh? Isn't she coming here too? Uh, no. I've been walking her home lately. Hmm. Wait, huh? Uh? So you're in that kind of relationship? Every single time! If anybody does anything with Ichika, Enemoto assumes she's in a relationship. Yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> and Kay just always encourages this. Uh, oh. I'll give you my contact info. Yanagi, text me later. Fine. I think that Kay does think we're in the relationship, though, but Ichigo still misunderstands. I didn't think he'd go along with it so easily. He and I had opposite viewpoints. He refused to make sacrifices. He typically wouldn't act if there was any risk. Which meant... He won't act out of self-interest. I was sure that he was actually trying to protect Ichigo too. I'd sensed that intent from him most of all, but he suppressed his personal feelings. As long as he didn't absolutely trust her, he wouldn't even consider taking any risks. And he was so afraid that his own actions could place her in danger. It's not that I don't understand, but... He wouldn't be able to protect her that way. No matter what danger she's in, I just need to protect her from all of it. In fact, the greater the danger is, the more it means to me to protect her. I thought he talked to Yoshinori while he was there. Where is he? Alright, I need to reply. Wait, I'll be there soon. Don't go outside. Fine, I'll be in the lobby. You're such a worrywart now. <laughs> That's me. I can't even get a nap anymore when I think what could happen to you. Oh, you. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> when the exasperated reply came back, I chuckled reflexively. I'm not exaggerating, though. It wasn't an exaggeration at all to say that protecting her was now my reason for living. Someone watching might laugh at me for trying to be her knight in shining armor. Oh, it's sweet. I continued to text her as I approached the Shinjuku police station. I personally enjoyed it, but I did it mainly because it let me check up on her from a distance. By the way, any progress on the November case? There was a pause before she replied. I waited, wondering what face she was making as she typed her response. Nothing to go on yet. I'm tracking down related people. It's fairly recent. Nobody's expecting instant results. There must be something. I'll find it. <sighs> I smiled bitterly at the reply. The sight of her depression over her weakness and lack of progress had been burned into my brain. It was so very like her to try and hide that by feigning stubbornness. I want to cheer her up. That was also part of protecting her. Aww. What is there that I could do to make her cheer up and smile? Apparently just hanging out with her works. <laughs> He's always doing adorable funny things. As I pondered the question... I strolled through a crosswalk. Almost there. Sorry you have to do this. I know you're busy. Thanks as always. <sighs> the message rattled me somewhat. I could hear my conscience stabbing at me from the inside. I'm not doing this for you. I'm not doing it for anyone else. Don't worry about it. Just doing this because I want to. I'm fulfilling my own wish. I'll protect you. 
even if it cost me my life. Don't use me to throw away your life. And back to Adonis. X day incident. Report. For November. Somebody is an awfully slow typer. X day incident report. Report of X day incidents. November 5th. In this incident, a truck and a police motorcycle collided head on, resulting in two deaths. It was initially believed to be an accident, but surveillance camera footage revealed that traffic signals had been manipulated in order to cause the fatal crash. The Roman numeral 2 was also discovered, although this had not been made public knowledge. After an Adonis coin was found clutched in the hand of a victim, the incident began to be investigated as next day crime. Afterwards, Adonis broadcast a statement on the internet. Some people exist who should have never been born. Self-centered, arrogant, demeaning. People with these qualities in excess trample upon the dignity of others. We, Adonis, shall pass judgment upon your people overflowing with base desires. Countdown to X Day 2. The plan can finally enter its final stage. Until November, the countdown was just amusement, the foundation for people to learn true fear. The enforcers, who embraced sorrow, hatred, and rage, would demonstrate justice by their own hands. And if the subject of the collar experiments acts according to the plan, she will surely see what lies beyond. A pure, white, beautiful world. Back to Ichika. Oh, we're skipping the night. December 21st, 7 a.m. <sighs> so sleepy. I yawned deeply in front of the mirror after I finished getting dressed in the morning. After I got home, I'd gone online to look for any useful information on the November X Day incident. Of course I came up dry. All I managed to learn was public opinion. The police suck. They can control traffic lights? Terrifying! LOL. Maybe both died because they're both criminals? Thoughtless, reactionary comments like that. It felt like the public was becoming desensitized to the endless murders. Oh, maybe he's here already. Morning. Ready to go? I smiled when I saw Okazaki's message. That was how much he lifted my gloomy spirits. Yep, see, just him being around makes her happy. Good morning. I'll be right out. I end up using an emoji too. <laughs> Okazaki used so many emojis in his text that it made me want to include them too. Lately, he had been coming to walk me to work every morning. At first, I apologetically asked him to stop, but it just pressured me into it as he always did. Secretly, I really appreciate it though. Since I was wearing the collar, I didn't know if Adonis had a mole tailing me. I could probably handle myself against a civilian, but I wasn't so sure I'd be able to cope with a trained Adonis operative. In that regard, Okazaki's constant presence was a relief. Yep, as a professional. Oh, wait. Can I come inside for a minute? Hmm? I looked curiously at the message I received. Simultaneously, the intercom rang. Morning, Ichika. He was wearing a gentle smile as expected. What's it about, Okazaki? I'm about ready to go. He always met me in front of the building, so I was worried that something had happened. Were you waiting for long? No, I wasn't. I have something to give you today. Something to give? <laughs> Close your eyes. Uh, uh okay? Oh? I did as I was told. I waited nervously. Okay, you can look. Aww. Ta-da! When I opened my eyes, I was greeted by a bouquet of flowers. Huh? This is... It was a small, lovely bouquet with well-matched pink and white flowers. There is a florist that opens early, so I stopped by on the way here. I was hoping this would cheer you up. 
Ichika? Are these for me? <laughs> Who else would they possibly be for? I picked them out just for you. Oh, why does he look sad? Uh, oh, don't tell me you hate flowers. N no, not at all. I'm just completely surprised is all. Yeah, don't make the poor boy sad. I hadn't imagined that I would suddenly get a bunch of flowers out of the blue. Can I keep them? Didn't I say I picked them out for you? Uh, you treated me before and let me use your pillow, so it's thanks. You were looking kind of glum yesterday, so I wanted to see you smile. Okazaki! A feeling of warmth spread through my chest. I've been stressed by my lack of progress since I started investigating the November incidents. I have been racking my brain to figure out what else I could do. He was thinking about me. Oh, I can't hide anything from you, Okazaki. That's just because you're honest. Does it show that easily on my face? Yeah, but I like watching you that way, so don't hide things from me. If you like the flowers, would you mind giving me a smile? Aren't I smiling already? <laughs> Thank you. I'm incredibly happy. Really. I felt my face break into a warm smile. It had taken a while because I'd been overcome by happiness like this. So, I gave him the brightest smile I could manage to show him how grateful I was for his kindness. That's great. When he saw me, Okazaki smiled himself like he was a blooming flower. Oh. Smiles look good on you. His gentle words and soft voice made me blush. He was the one who helped me smile. I was nervous. I've never bought flowers before. When the shopkeeper asked me what kind of person I wanted to give them to, I wasn't sure. How did you respond? It was embarrassing, but I really wanted to know how he replied. Hmm. It's embarrassing, so it's my secret. Oh, you... Another secret? That's so unfair! I can't hide anything from you! I exaggeratedly pouted, and Okazaki's eyebrows knitted in worry. Eh? Uh, I guess it wouldn't be fair to hide it when you put it that way. Yep, the fewer secrets the better. Um, I told them I wanted them for someone special. Huh? She's kind, hardworking, and strong, and very cute. That's totally unfair. What? You know how embarrassing it was to say that? You don't look embarrassed at all. <laughs> hmm. I suppose it's more embarrassing for you. Of course it is. In the end, I realized that I'd become more embarrassed by his revelation than he was by my declaring it. He thought that I was special because of his wish to protect someone. I understood that. But the words came to mind again for some reason. I feel a lot better now. Thanks, Okazaki. I feel better thanks to you too. It goes both ways. Because I laughed? Yeah. He nodded, grinning. I couldn't hide my blushing, so I hid my face in the bouquet. <laughs> He's doing the most normal courting in this game. Found you. I murmured in front of my PC monitor. While doing my SRCPO job, I'd also been looking through a list of retired police employees. The list went back five years. The victim in the November incident had three subordinates, who all quit at the same time. Ah, is this the bullying within the police? All of them cited personal reasons for quitting. What if one of them quit out of enmity towards the victim? Or what if all of them did? There could be a connection to the case. The motorcycle officer who was killed in November was Masayoshi Todoroki, age 34. He was assigned to the traffic operations squad. He was commissioner, second in command of his unit. First, I need to know what kind of person he was. The x day crimes had been an attempt to expose and punish the police for their scandals. It was very likely that the victim had done something in the past, as Shirashi suggested. I knew that this was outside of my jurisdiction. I also knew this might draw the ire of the police. But now, I had to do whatever I could to help. I wonder if I can get anyone to talk. Maybe if you use your feminine wiles. 
Well, Okazaki wouldn't be happy about that, never mind. Alright, so I gotta go to 7F. Investigations headquarters! Because that one guy looks a lot like Morioka, maybe <laughs> they are related. In some fashion. It had been a month since the killing happened. Investigations HQ had probably long since investigated everyone related to the victims. Asking about basic information might be the quickest route. It would be reckless to suddenly ask someone in, in investigations for the information. One wrong step would bring suspicion on me. And I could be told to stay out of investigations. The question is, who should I ask? Commissioner Minagishi's face popped into my head. In his position, he'd know the most information. Yeah, but he's also one sharp cookie and he's a big guy and, uh, you could easily make a misstep with him. He was high-ranking, not someone to take lightly. However, he did seem to have a calm personality. I could learn something if I did this skillfully. But can you do it skillfully? Weaving my way through an incessantly bustling throng of investigators, I peeked into the office. Thankfully, I wasn't interrupting a meeting but the tension in the air was palpable. There were many anxious investigators in there. I wasn't brave enough to step into that. They look busy. Maybe this is too much. Miss Hoshino, what are you doing here? Eh? I jumped and turned around to face the voice. It was Minagishi. Just who I was looking for. This is my chance. I forced on an expression of respect and bowed to him. Thank you for your help the other day. No, I apologize for taking up your valuable time. So, do you have some business here today? Um, I was curious as to whether there's been any progress on the X-Day cases. Huh. So you're curious after all. After all? I think that SRCPO officer should be kept up to date on certain investigations since their job is to keep residents calm and informed. For example, in November, no bystanders were caught in a crash, but one wrong step and it could have been worse. So, you want to know about November? Er, um, yes. Why does he look so clever right there? God, it really makes me want to date him. He smiled as if he saw right through me. I nodded. I could feel my heart pounding. The information that the SRCPO brings in is helpful to our work, so I'll gladly share whatever information I can. Thank you, sir. I bowed deeply and cut to the chase. Um, the motorcycle officer who died in the crash, Mr. Todoroki. Him. I didn't know him directly, so I can only tell you what our investigators learned. Well, he doesn't look happy, so it seems negative. With that preface, Minagishi began to describe Masayoshi Todoroki. Todoroki was serious and passionate about work. He was highly evaluated by his superiors and was apparently up for a promotion. Though, it seems that he was known for being very severe with his subordinates. He was a strong leader, but some were quite upset with him. I see. There were two suspects in this incident. Is there some reason you're focusing on Todoroki? Uh. Minagishi's eyes narrowed slightly. Well, I was just curious to know what Todoroki was like. I desperately changed the subject to avoid any further suspicion. Uh, um, on the subject of the traffic lights, are you sure that they were tampered with? Are they sure? Come on. I know that the police can manually control the lights, so could that suggest the possibility of a mole? <sighs> Keep this between us, alright? Huh? Both the witnesses and the public know that this was an accident caused by traffic light manipulation. The question is, how could that happen? Hacking? Someone took control of the ATCS, the Advanced Traffic Control System at headquarters. Uh. Therefore, we know that it wasn't an inside job. An undercover mole wouldn't need to hack into the police systems they could already access. Minagishi held his index finger up to his mouth, chuckling suggestively. This was a major failure for the police, so please do not speak of this information to others. But, but, why tell me? While this isn't public knowledge, it's pretty widely known within the police force. Besides, 
It's information that you would have easily obtained if you were looking for it. I understood the implication that Minagishi was making with the statement. He means that it's something that Yanagi's team already knew. Minagishi and Investigations HQ already knew that I worked with Yanagi's team. He had told me because this was information that they'd easily learned. Thank you, sir. I expressed my gratitude and left. Makes me feel like I'm bad at investigating because I probably should have known it too. Hmm. During my lunch break, I walked around to gather more information. Right now, it wasn't possible to learn much about Todoroki. And the other victim... The truck driver's name was Ryota Kakizaki, age 25. The investigation had found no connection between Todoroki, Kakizaki. Investigations HQ had thought that Kakizaki was targeted for his past criminal record. Kakizaki caused an incident that injured people, so he'd have a reason to be targeted by Adonis. Todoroki was believed to be an innocent casualty. Based on this, the investigation had focused on Kakizaki's past and the victim of that incident. If the goal of the ex crimes is revenge, who of those two unrelated people was targeted? This was important. I should look into Todoroki. The investigation had focused on Kakizaki, so any information I could find would already be on file. If there was some reason that someone would want revenge on Todoroki, it was likely that it hadn't been uncovered yet. Or, more likely, it can't be found. It could be something that exposed a failing of the police. I'm interested in the three officers who quit. They all worked for Todoroki. I should meet them. If you can. If they'll talk to you. As I decided this, I received a text message. How's the investigation going? Don't work too hard. Thanks for this morning. I've made some progress. I think I'll go see the people who used to work for the victim. By yourself? I hesitated when I saw the immediate reply. Uh, let's see. No, with Okazaki. If you're okay with it, would you mind coming with me? Of course. I'd be sad if you asked someone else. Actually, I thought it wouldn't be good to rely on you so much. Why? I'm happy when you do. I'll just sulk if you hold back. Oh. I felt my heart pounding at his words. Then I won't hold back. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> cute little bow emoji. I'm tough. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stifle a giggle at his cute emoji skills. <sighs> I closed my phone. We sent a few more texts and decided that we'd meet after I finished work. I can't help but laugh whenever Okazaki uses those emoji. What are you grinning about? Oh, Mochida. Was I smiling? Yeah, you look like you were going to start dancing. I covered my cheeks with both hands. Uh, right. I wanted to ask you something. Okay, and we'll ask in the next episode. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good spot to stop. Don't know what'll happen once we get into the scene with Mochida. Yeah, so I guess we should be about the halfway point now. A curse and a blessing. Moving along so quickly, but then... It's also, for me, it's a little slow, because it's like... I love the story, but I need to get it done, because I... Uh, well, I'll talk about it later. Anyway, I hope to see you all in the next video, or some of my other ones. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.